Photography can be traced back some 50,000 years to cave paintings and it was a small step from there to use digital means to record artworks. I've been a photographer for 45 years and I've been a videographer for 45 days. In the old days I used to work with large format view cameras and large sheet film. A sheet of film, one for every exposure, was as large as the palm of my hand. I've been a still life photographer all my life, honing my skills, studying artworks in Amsterdam's Rijksmuseum by Rembrandt, Van Meer, Bruegel, Caravaggio and other Baroque painters. I've always worked in advertising, often pulling more weight than was my fair share. And I've been keenly shooting packs whenever they came into range, big ones and small ones. I'm from Germany. I was born in Hamburg, right up north. I grew up in Essen, got my education in Düsseldorf and in my early 20s moved quick smart to Amsterdam for a couple of years and then lived in Copenhagen for five years. In between I spent one of my most formative years traveling overland from Amsterdam to India and Nepal via Afghanistan. Afghanistan was an amazing place. It was unbelievable, but it was very, very cold. We traveled through the north in midwinter. Temperatures got as low as 30 degrees minus at night. You either left your engine running all night or you had to defrost the oil sump in the morning with a little fire underneath. We did cop a fair share of punctures, probably because we used the wrong side of the road. But we had an extraordinary time and we met some amazing locals. Mind you, this was well before Afghanistan descended into darkness and their 30 years of war. Our destination was Kathmandu, the capital of Nepal. This trip was 40 years ago. On another six months trip I went to Bali. This picture is of Augustin Norman Lampard, the artist, who was 115 years at the time, in 1977. These are artists I met on Bali and whose paintings I collected. On Bali I met my first wife and we came to Australia 35 years ago. We have three children and we've been in Sydney most of the time, but for a few years we lived in the bush, half an hour out of Bellingen, where we had a river as a boundary to our land. This photo is of my boys spearfishing in our own section of the Kalang River. Kalang is where our daughter was born and this is my all-time very, very favorite photo where my two little boys witness the birth of their sister. This is their sister 20 years later. Okay, that was a little bit of history. Now we enter a new millennium. My professional life changed very much when digital photography arrived. I changed the name of my business to Burmeister Digital and I began Sydney Photo Art, furiously shooting this city, its architecture, the beaches, parks and landmarks. Lots of fun and very satisfying. But more than just fun, the digital process allows me to finish my photos just the way I like them. For example, here is an 8 by 10 inch transparency, twice as large as my hand. This is the original photo, the way it came out of the camera 40 years ago. Look what I could do as I enhance it in Photoshop. I like to make subtle changes to my pictures in post-production, rather than indulge in digital trickery. Digital trickery, nevertheless, is part of my repertoire in my advertising work. In digital photography, anything is possible. I have in the past few years dabbled in desktop publishing. I've self-published a few books, most of them on photography. Zen Photo Art teaches to take better pictures. The Assistance Bible is about how to be the best photographic assistant you can be. And Going Pro is a guide to running a commercial photography business. Here's a book about another hobby of mine, philosophy. It doesn't have a title. Instead, it has three definitions for the term enlightenment. It's full of essays about life and death, war and peace, meditation and Zen, that sort of thing. Take this one, for instance, about an incident in my life a few years ago. Drowning. Once I was body surfing in the ocean. The sea was rough. The current overwhelmed me. I lost my footing. Wave upon wave pounded onto me. I held my arm up for help. One last breaker pushed me under. Exhausted, I looked up. I was at least a meter beneath the surface. I was drowning. But I was calm. My life did not flash by. I did not panic. Engulfed by sunlight and warmth, I floated weightlessly. Time had stopped. Life had lost urgency. I surrendered to the beauty around me. 
Then my arm was grabbed. I never really thanked my rescuer. Thank you, all those lifesavers. Here is another one. This one is for the ladies. Aphrodisiac. The man down on his knees is a great irresistible aphrodisiac for the woman. Scrubbing the bathroom floor, the toilet, bathtub and shower. And now for something totally different. A book on how to shoot erotic photo art. As you would expect, all photographers like shooting nudes. Some, indeed, have become photographers in order to be able to shoot nudes. Which is, I guess, as good a reason as any. When indulging in my erotic photo art, I experiment like all come out. I love that process. I'm answerable to no one. I do exactly what I want as I shoot models, actors, and a dancer like Candace from New York, who is an itinerant artist traveling the world and hooking up with photographers she finds on the internet. All my life I've shot a lot of people. Portraits are a mainstay of what I do. I walk up to people, talk to them and ask if I can take their picture. About 99 out of 100 say yes. And I shoot corporate portraits, often for LinkedIn. Turn your head toward, toward me a little bit more, yeah. Okay, that's good, yeah. And lean your head on the side a little bit, either side, doesn't matter right now, yeah, just a little bit, that's good. That's cool, all right. Um, turn your head over this way a little bit again, but not that much, not that much. And put, uh, put your head down onto your chin a little bit, just, yeah, that's cool, I like that. And now lean it over a little bit, just, yep. Yeah. And now, a big smile, goody. Cool. Right. Oh, been that's better. Actually, I'll take it up a little bit. Uh, yes. Big smile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Cool. Okay. Yeah, it's coming on. And I do also beauty portraits where I promise to make any woman look absolutely wonderful. Carsten Studio is just 100 meters from the cinema. Get a brochure in the foyer. That was a cinema commercial that screened in the theater next door to me, the Cremorne Orpheum. One area I've been very busy in for the past year is gym photography and it is my gym client, my little boys actually, that's them, who have been pestering me for the past year to shoot video. Yeah, that's my boys doing what they love doing. And here it is then, my very first corporate video for my sons and their Unity Gym in North Sydney. If you want to see more of my work, go to my website, carstenbohrmeister.com. Auf Wiedersehen. In the boxing classes, we're really trying to show people the correct technique for boxing. Most of the people that, that come into the boxing sessions really want to do it to either, you know, to burn fat or to improve their fitness. But I've been doing martial arts for about 20 years now and Yanni's also been doing boxing for about the same amount of time. So we try to show people correct technique rather than just getting people to sort of, you know, belt away at the bag. I've seen a lot of sort of outdoor boxing sessions where people are just bashing away at the pads and, and I didn't think too much of it. Because of my experience with martial arts, I wanted to make sure that people would actually learn, you know, sort of the correct technique how to do things. When we get people to hit the heavy bag, I'm usually trying to get them to learn how to use their hips. So we're trying to get them to rotate from the hip and to create a little bit of power. It's just, it uses so much energy, so it's great for, once again, for burning the calories. The power will come from the legs coming up and the hips rotating. You know, we've, we've got a lot of good equipment here. We, we've got a good little circuit that we can do. The speed ball we kind of do is, is just a little bit of a rest station. It, it teaches technique and it's fun. People seem to really enjoy hitting the, the speed ball uh, and it just gives people a little bit of a chance to rest. And then we utilize the, the spin bikes in here to really get the heart rate up and to, because um, it's a no-brainer, it doesn't require any skill. You know, even if people aren't so great at boxing and they, and they can't get the best workout when they're on the bags or the speed ball, uh, when they're on the bikes, they can really go for it and, and it burns as many calories as we can get down. 